How can I help? It was less of a dream and more of a vision, a vision the two of us shared. But I am certainly willing to answer any questions the Jedi Council did not. Are you wondering why we shared the vision? Or why we even received it in the first place? To the first, I can only repeat the answer that the Council gave us. Our fates are linked. And for two as strong as we are in the Force, that amounts to a near-physical bond. As to the second, I truly don't have an answer for you. The Force works as it will. And perhaps we should be grateful for what we've been given. Perhaps because we desired to. Perhaps because they came to this planet and were strong enough in the Force to leave a, a trace. They did something important here. Of that, I am certain. It may be simply that we are sensitive to that event, or it may not. We dreamed about Revan and Malak either because we were meant to or because we needed to. There is no other way to look at it. I have no idea. It was obviously important, however. That is why we must investigate this further. With luck, we will. I would rather not rely on such visions to guide us. But when we have so little else to go on, and the galaxy hangs in the balance... As you wish. We really should return our thoughts to business anyway. How can I help? I do. How did you know? I'm a Jedi. I am far too disciplined to betray my emotions with outward physical displays. We both know the real reason you have some idea of what I'm thinking, the bond we share. Our connection allows us glimpses into each other's mind. We can feel some of what the other feels, and what I feel within you troubles me. A Padawan must receive considerable training. They must learn to control their emotions and darker impulses. Often it takes years before using the Force can be considered safe. The fact that you are so strong in the Force and have had such relatively little training could have terrible consequences. For you, and for everyone around you. I don't think there's much you can do. If things were different, I would recommend several years of training under one of the Jedi Masters. But I fear that won't be possible. Already you exhibit the kind of willfulness, erratic behavior, and lack of compassion that will lead you to corruption. We must all resist the influence of the dark side. It's everything we are fighting against. This is doubly important for you, with your natural affinity for the Force. That's good to hear. Without the proper training, however, I'm afraid you will find the path difficult even with the best of intentions. There is great danger ahead for both of us. Our destinies are intertwined. Everything one of us does will have consequences for the other. Any reckless behavior on your part is likely to affect me as well. Yes, that is true. I will do my best to guide you, but I am no master. Not yet. And there are times when I find the sheer strength of your power almost overwhelming. Your power could be a gift or a curse. When you need guidance or advice or support, I will do my best to help you stay on the path of the light. I only hope I have the wisdom to help you through the dark times. But for now, we should return to our mission. Yes, what's on your mind? You got it. How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? What is it you would like to speak to me about? I, I thank you for your concern, but I am still a bit shaken. I am. I try to be strong, as one of my people should. But I know I am still weak inside. I have been thinking about myself, about Quatra, and about my fall to the dark side. I keep thinking that it was my anger that drove me that far, that nearly damned me. 
I look inside myself now and I can still see it. I still feel it. More time would do me good. Time to distance myself from that anger. I think that is why the Council agreed to send me with you. They think, perhaps, that in your company, I will be able to free myself from it. Huh? Oh, sorry. I was thinking about Terrace. I still can't believe it's gone. I mean, I grew up there, and now it's... it's... it's just gone. Yeah, I know. The Jedi got rid of Revan, so... I figure Malik's days are numbered, too. But that doesn't make the pain go away, you know? Look, I'm not saying I can't go on or anything like that. It's just... it's a shock, you know? I mean, I knew the Sith were evil and all, but the reality of it kind of slaps you in the face. But I suppose that's why we need to stop Malik, right? The more time I spend dwelling on Terrace, the more chance some other planet will get wiped out. I guess that's what it comes down to. So don't worry about me. I'll be okay. And if you need my help against Malik or the Sith, I'll be there for you. Hey there. What can I do for you? No problem. Just so happens I've got one here I've been working on. Here you go. I'll just add it to our inventory. Anything else you need? Really? You want to know about me? Nobody's ever really been interested in me before. What do you want to know? Big Z's my family, you know? My parents, well, I, I guess they're dead. It was just me on my own until the day I saw Zalbar in the Lower City. I could tell right away he was in trouble. This was before the gang wars were out of hand. But even then, the Volkers were scum. A few of them were hassling Big Z, trying to pick a fight. But he wasn't looking for trouble. Hey, nobody said the Volkers were smart, but there were three of them. So maybe they figured they could handle him. I don't know. Anyway, I don't like the Volkers at the best of times. And when I saw them picking on this poor Wookiee, all alone on a strange planet, overwhelmed by the big city, I just lost it. I screamed out, leave him alone, you core slimes, and charged right at them. Well, one of them saw me coming and slapped me so hard he just about knocked me cold. Hey, don't treat me like I'm a little girl. I ain't no kid. I'm 14 years old. Those Volkers didn't scare me. They're nothing but cowards. I knew how to deal with them. Of course, I never got the chance. I guess Zalbar didn't like seeing me get smacked around. He let out this howl and yanked that Volker a meter up off the ground and held him there by his throat. The other two screamed and ran off. Can't say I blame them. The first time you see an angry Wookiee up close, it isn't a pretty sight. I thought Zalbar was gonna rip that punk's arms off and beat him to death with his own fists. The Volker was so scared, he fainted. Or maybe it was Big Z's breath just knocked him out. I keep telling Zalbar to brush those choppers of his, but he never listens. Just stay upwind when he's speaking and you'll be fine. Anyway, I knew those Volkers would be back with friends, so I grabbed Zalbar and we took off. Ever since then, We've been a team. We look out for each other, you know? Hey, what's that supposed to mean? You think I can't take care of myself? I've got street smarts. I know how to get by on my own. In fact, I look out for Zalbar more than he looks out for me, you know? Big Z's a little bit too gullible to make it alone on the mean streets of the lower city. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Like I used to tell my brother. Fast talk and slick words don't get the job done. My brother's a touchy subject, you know. It just so happens, I don't really feel like talking about him right now. Nothing personal. Let's just get back to the business at hand, okay? Yeah, what do you want? I was one of the best youth warriors in the Clan Ordo in my time. No one before me had mastered the power of our basilisk war droids as quickly as I had. Except Mandalore himself, of course. In those days, we were sweeping across the Outer Rim, 
destroying all who fought us. The young Mandalores would prove themselves in real combat with unknown opponents above a thousand worlds. Each brought back stories of his achievements. I remember it well, orbiting high above a placid world, its defenses just stirring. As was tradition, I would go ahead of the first wave to find enemies in the thickest fighting. I remember sitting there in my armor, linked directly with a basilisk thrumming beneath me, my heart racing with fear of the coming battle. Every new warrior has to fear to understand how to beat it. You must know that. The doors opened in front of me, and the air was sucked out of the drop bay, scattering crystals of frozen vapor across my path. I can't describe what it feels like to look directly down at a world, falling continuously as you circle it, with barely 15 centimeters of armor plate protecting you. When the magnetic locks disengaged on my droid, I plunged out of the drop bay towards the battle that waited below. I don't remember. It doesn't matter anyway. That world's dead now. The exhilaration, the euphoria I felt as I streaked into the atmosphere, dodging self-guided projectiles and beam weapons, was unmatched. An 80-kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. The explosion from that sent shock waves that leveled the entire complex around it. It was the moment of my life. I'll never forget those times. But things are different now. We can't go on fighting the way we did. There are too few of us left now. But I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I trust I've satisfied your curiosity for now. Is there something else you want to know? <laughs> stimulants make a warrior out of even the weakest human. Here's a speed-boosting stimulant. Is there anything else you need? You want another war st You're st We were going through the asteroid fields of the Crispin system at the very edge of the galaxy, playing with the pirates and smugglers we found there. The main belt in the Crispin system consists of mainly small rocks covered in frozen methane gas shell. Ha! <laughs> I remember using a thermal generator to cause the outer layer of one of the asteroids to vaporize in a picosecond. It blew out and shredded the three smugglers using it for cover. But that was a mistake. The asteroid I had targeted was smaller than most, maybe a dozen meters on a side. On the outside, it looked the same as any other, just a ball covered in frozen gas. But something must have been inside it, something inactive in the cold. The heat of my blast might have triggered something or woken something up. After I'd hit it, spots of light and heat appeared all over the thin shell, still covering it, evaporating the gases. What lay underneath looked like some sort of rocky growth. A deformed rock, pitted by scores of micrometeorite scars. I think something even older might have been inside that. It started rotating faster and faster as we watched it. After a second, it started spraying fire, thermal projectiles that melted our armor like wax. We were caught completely by surprise. Before we could counterattack, it fled at an incredible speed. We couldn't catch it, but we could follow its hyperspace wake. We followed its trail as far as we could, heading away from the galactic core. When it finally led beyond the edge of our galaxy, we abandoned our efforts. Anything that wants to commit suicide in that great void is not worth our trouble trying to catch. Uh, that's the only story I have for now. I'll tell you some more stuff later if we get the chance. Is there something else you want to know? <laughs> Here's a str there
Mogo, Kachichu Itabo Tong Haitwam Chichi Jung Lumpa Itapoetic Kachikun Itahodonga Takum just Takmiki Grabble Mogo Kachichu Itabo Dunga Runda di Hotonga Kun Hunka B Kachikun Itahodonga Muchashak Pakhat Kiye no no dama pao Runda di hotonga kun hanka bi Takum ju stak miki grabble mogo Tong haid wam jiji jum lumpa Nita poe tikito Dolpa da bongwa Kachikun itahodonga Yiking kuno ba mulerat Lord Malik, the Star Forge is operating at 200% capacity, far beyond our expectations. I am more interested in the young Jedi Bastila and her battle meditation. Have you learned how she escaped the destruction of Taris? She was aided by Karth Onasi, a decorated war hero of the Republic and a legendary soldier. During the Mandalore Wars, he was honored many times for his bravery. You know this man? Yes. Malik, he served under me when I still followed the Republic. You could say I was his mentor. Interesting. How did you acquire this information, Admiral? An eyewitness, Lord Malik. Kalo Nord, a bounty hunter, was there when Bastila and Karth escaped the planet. Apparently, they left him for dead. A Jedi and a war hero. It's a wonder you survived the encounter. I am hard to kill, Lord Malik. Kahlo has agreed to help us capture the young Bastila for a very hefty fee, of course. But I assure you, he is well worth the price. His reputation as a bounty hunter is well earned. Her companions are nothing to me, Kahlo. 
but I desire the young Jedi taken alive, if at all possible. Lord Malak, forgive me, there is something else. May we have a private audience away from the ears of the common soldiers? I trust you are not wasting my time, Admiral Carath. I promise you will be very interested in what Kalo has to tell you about Bastila's other companions, Lord Malak. has given us a, a vision, like the one we shared on Dantooine. Did you see it? Of course. You must have. The Force is strong with us both. Tatooine is known for little but blowing sand. I find it surprising that there would be a star map somewhere in its desolate wastes. A star map would likely have to be within some kind of shelter to protect it against dust and sandstorms. I suspect there are many such caves and caverns hidden in the sands of the Dune Sea. The creatures of this world probably use them as their lairs. No doubt things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location. How can I help? Yes, I did. I wanted to speak to you about our mission and what lies ahead for us. It seems fate, or the Force, is driving us into a confrontation with the Dark Lord. You must prepare yourself for when we face Malak. The confrontation will be difficult for you. I remember how hard it was when I first faced Revan. It's true that due to my battle meditation, I was with the Jedi Strike team that boarded Revan's ship. We did not kill Revan, however. Our mission was to capture Revan if possible. It was Malak who turned on his own master, firing upon Revan's ship while we were still on board it. It was his desire to kill us and his master both. Thankfully, we narrowly escaped the vessel as it exploded. True, I suppose. And yet the outcome of that battle was unexpected. To all of us, Revan's end was unforeseen. As I said, we were there to capture Revan alive. The Jedi do not believe in killing their prisoners. No one deserves execution, no matter what their crimes. Remember that Revan and Malak were once great Jedi, heroes in every sense of the word. They demonstrate the danger of the dark side to us all. I'm sorry, we really shouldn't speak of this anymore. The memory of my confrontation with Revan is painful. Let's return to the mission, please.
Welcome to Anchorhead, potential customer. Zerka Corporation stands ready to serve, after some formalities, of course. First, your ship is not on our list of planned arrivals for today. There is a docking fee of 100 credits because of this. The immediate benefit is access to these very docking facilities. This is the only port in Anchorhead. Once you've paid, we will offer trade services as well. We're not unreasonable, we just want to cover expenses. I assure you that the fee is non-negotiable. We have a very thin margin of profit on this world. No, 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 I'm sorry, but we have to charge something. Maintenance is expensive out here. That would be unfortunate. Zerka Corporation can't afford to extend credit. Everyone pays. That's the rule. I thought you would. Without these fees, Zerka Corporation would have closed this port years ago. This will cover any future landings as well. It's like a registration, so we can serve you better when you return. Now, as a customs officer, I can provide information on services. Is this visit business or pleasure? That's not much information. Could you tell me more? You a digger? I've heard of ruins being found now and then, but they've always been stripped by sand people soon after. You're not going to get anywhere with them. I guess you could ask around, but I doubt you'll learn anything different. You could always ask a Jawa. It's hard to tell what they know. It depends on what level of risk you want to take. You could ask at the Zerka office if any bounties need collecting. That's in the central anchor head. While you're at the office, ask for a hunting license so you can sell trophies to Faza in his lodge, just north of them. I suppose you could also take up swoop racing. Talk to the hut at the registration office by the track. That's in West Anchorhead. I can't say I know which of these jobs is the most dangerous. I stay away from all of them. There is no need for that. I'm just doing my job. You are free to move as you wish. What? I'm here.
La boda ni un kiss my toma. Please, will you help me? I have nothing, nothing left. I am no beggar. I just need a little help is all. There's no one for me to turn to on this wretched planet. My husband was a hunter, killed out on the dunes. This raid plate is all I have left. Please, will you buy it? I don't need a handout. I just can't sell it to Faza without a license. Please, I'm worried about having it. They're so rare. It's the bone plate from the head of the desert raid. My husband was so proud when he found it. He had just started hunting. He said he felt sure the next hunt would bring in more, so we waited to sell this one. Then he never came back. Will you buy it? I can't sell it myself. They are worth more than 500 points. Please tell me you're kidding. I can't get any lower than this, and you would take advantage? Please, no! Take it then. But you may as well have just killed me. You've trapped us here with nothing. This is beneath even you, stealing from a helpless woman. How could you? You... you have no conscience. That plate was all I had. We're trapped here now, all because of you. Darkness take you, monster. It troubles me to see you behaving this way. Such acts can lead to the dark side. Takom juz tak miki grabal mo. Cheto ba do wana ni di bobo. Tong. Mucho shak pa khat. 
kiet akom juz dach miki. Jedo ba do wana ni di bobo. Mucho shak pa khat. Kiet no no dach akom juz dach miki. Grabar. Jedo ba do wana ni di bobo. Don. Jedo ba. Yes, I suppose I can understand your curiosity, given the bond that connects us. Very well. I'll tell you a bit about myself. I was found to be strong with the Force at a young age, as most Padawans are. As a girl, I was given to the Order to be trained. When I joined the Order, I left my family on Tal Ravan, as all Padawans do. My family is still there, the last that I heard. I've had little contact with them, as it is discouraged. Relationships with family members are fraught with powerful emotions. Such extremes are to be avoided. Anger and hate are the worst, but even love can lead to folly. Emotional entanglements can be dangerous. They can impair rational thought. They can lead to outbursts of uncontrolled emotion. A Jedi must be above such things. Like all who join the Order, I have learned to embrace the life I've chosen. I had to let go of my attachments to my family. It can be a hard lesson to learn. I was not on good terms with all of my family, but I do remember missing my father terribly for a long time. Very close. I was only a little girl when I left my family, but I still remember him fondly. He was kind and gentle and doted on me. My mother, however, was different. I was not on good terms with my mother. I was only a little girl when I left, but I was old enough to resent her and the way she treated my father. She pushed my father into treasure hunting. I spent all my young life on ships, traveling from one false lead to the next. She whittled away my father's entire fortune, and I hated her for it. I think she was relieved to give me to the Jedi, but my father was heartbroken. A child is too young to understand the sacrifices that must be made. It's better if they have no contact with their family once they're removed. Once I was older, I realized the wisdom of this policy. A Jedi must do what is needed, personal desires notwithstanding. Love can only obscure and confuse the matter. Even a Jedi cannot always control the feelings of the heart. We must do our best to guard against it, no matter what the cost. But some sacrifices are harder than others. I, I do not wish to discuss this anymore. I would rather return to our mission. Something you want? I don't have a lot of time for talk, so please, make it quick. Of course, I always have time for a pretty face. Any face, really. What do you need? I repair the sand crawlers when they return from the mines. They get pretty banged up, even without the attacks. The sand people attack them pretty regularly. Zerka Corporation is getting pretty sick of it, I hear. They've offered bounties on sand people for a while now. A few hunters take them up on it. Too dangerous. Try at the Zerka offices, right here. They no. Oh, the big crawlers head out at dawn. That's so they avoid the bigger predators. The raid, I mean. Doesn't help avoid the sand people, though. They attack pretty regular, no matter what Zerka Corporation tries. Try at the Zerka offices, right here. 
Well, it's a hole in the galaxy as far as I'm... But that's happened before and... We'll... All right. Ninja Can I help you? These are the offices of the Zerka Corporation. I trust you have business with the company? If this is about employment, I'm afraid all regular mining positions are full. And before you ask, we are also no longer selling hunting licenses. As I said, we are no longer selling them. There are too many people cavorting about outside the walls as it is. We use them to ensure that only people judged fit by Zerka Corporation are allowed outside the city. We don't allow casual exploration because of legal concerns. Zerka Corporation takes no responsibility for loss of life on the dunes. It's just so we can keep track of people. No one leaves the city without a Zerka hunting license. Well, normally we charge 200 credits, but I could make an exception if you agreed to perform a task for us. It's similar to hunting. The sand people are becoming a problem. They destroy our sand crawlers and kill our miners. One particular tribe is the worst. It's as if their chieftain has decided to wage war against us. I would like their attacks terminated. Bring me their gaffy sticks as proof. If you agree to do this, I'll give you a hunting license now and pay a bounty for each stick later. I'll give a bonus for the chieftains. Which would you rather have dumped on your office floor? Besides, they're ceremonial weapons, unique to each warrior. It's just as good. Excellent. Now, just so we understand each other, this is an enforceable contract. Zerka Corporation takes this very seriously. Here's your license, and a few directions. We believe one of their enclaves is in the far south of the Dune Sea. You might try following one of our sand crawlers. They're regularly attacked. I wouldn't mind you escorting them. Very well, though I do have work to get back to. I assume that by out of the ordinary, you're referring to the destruction of Terrace? That is all anyone is talking about. I'm afraid Zerga Corporation is not offering any comment on those events. We wouldn't wish to anger the participants. Zerka Corporation policy is not subject to your approval. It is a sound business model. Save us your commentary. Very well, though I do have work. Farewell. ボタニーウィンキスマトマ。ワナコンベスチンパーマルリララチコン。スリモパトナ。ラボタニーウィンキスマトマ。ワナコンベスチンパーウィアミチュスクナチタナイ。イナクン。ジャワナボタアユアタ
Hey there, what can I do for you? I, I was a little snappish when we last talked. I'm sorry about that. I get a little touchy when it comes to Griff. It's kind of embarrassing telling people about him. It's complicated. Griff wasn't the most popular guy. He had his faults. But I still loved him, you know? Sometimes people don't understand. I never knew my parents. My brother always looked out for me. He's the one who brought me here to Tars. I was just a kid, only five. But I remember the trip, if you could call it that. We were stuffed inside a packing crate in a Starfighter's cargo hold with just enough food and water to make the trip. Not exactly first class, you know? I don't know the whole story. I was pretty young, but my brother owed a lot of money. Might even have been a few arrest warrants out for him, I don't know. The only way to get off the planet was to smuggle ourselves out. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like we were criminals. Well, maybe my brother was. See, this is why I don't like to talk about it. It makes Griff sound worse than he really was. My brother had his problems, but he always looked out for me. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Without my brother, I don't know where I'd be. He gambled and drank, and he was always borrowing money for his latest get-rich-quick scheme. But he had a good heart, you know? He taught me how to survive. He showed me how to slice into a computer security system, how to get inside a locked building without the entrance codes, and how to spot a wealthy mark for a quick shell game. Yeah. Griff did right by me. I really miss him since he left. I keep hoping he'll come back someday. He promised me he would. He fell in with a bad crowd. It's all Lena's fault. She's the one who took him from me. Just batted those long lashes at him and off he went. I don't want to talk about Griff and Lena. Just the thought of that space tramp makes my blood boil. Subject's closed, as far as I'm concerned. If I'm gonna be any help to you, I can't be worrying about my brother running off with some intergalactic skank. So is there something else you need? Okay, have it your way. Lord Malak was most displeased when he learned you had escaped Taris alive. He has promised a great reward to whoever destroys you.
How can I help? I do. I've been watching you, studying you closely to see what kind of progress you've made since your training at the hands of Master Zar. I've seen you give in to temptation and indulge your baser emotions on many occasions. I'm afraid you are on the path that leads to the dark side. You need to see what the dark side represents in its entirety. For it is what we battle. Only the wisdom of a Jedi Master can truly explain this. But I will do my best to make you understand. The dark side is not simply giving in to anger, or temptation, or to use the Force to destructive ends. These things only lead to the dark side. The dark side grows stronger and more insidious the closer you draw to it. It begs you to surrender to it, to release all its terrible power, and it becomes harder and harder to resist. And once you stop resisting, it's too late. It twists you up inside and turns you into a mockery of everything you once stood for. We need only to look at the atrocities which have been committed by those under its sway to understand the terrible, corrupting evil of the dark side. Millions dead, and far more suffering. What sort of person would you have to become to perform such deeds gladly? And how adept must one become at making excuses for one's actions if suffering is the result? How long before you stop making excuses at all? It's so easy to think that we would never fall prey to such a horror. That we have unlimited control, vigilance, and foresight. If only that were true. The Sith have become powerful because there are what we are. I don't know. The vision of our future is clouded by shadow, but words alone cannot save one from the dark side. Something you want, Spacer. Go talk to the office if you want to complain about conditions here. I don't want to hear it. Seems like every other person I meet is complaining about something. Well, it's not going to get better, so leave me alone. I don't really have any interest in helping you. Like I said... Good. I have a lack of business. Hey there, what can I do for you? I always heard Tatooine was nothing but a rock covered by a bunch of worthless sand. I can't even figure out why Zerka Corp set up their mining operations here. Sorry I can't be more help, you know. Is there anything else I can do for you? I'm sorry for the way I acted before. It's just that when it comes to Lena, I tend to get a little worked up. My brother and me had a good thing going. Sure, Griff had his run-ins with the law on Terrace, but we got by okay, until Lena came and ruined everything. She was a dancer at the cantina where my brother used to go play Pazic. Griff could be a real smooth talker, and it wasn't long before the two of them were dating. But Lena was used to dating rich Theresian nobles, guys with mountains of credits. Griff could never give her the lifestyle she was used to, no matter how hard he worked. Right, sure, I understand. We got all this other stuff going on, what with the Sith and all. You're busy, no problem. Maybe later we can talk, when you have more time, you know? Well, fresh face for the game. I wonder... All right. Oh, yeah. 
Kita Tolong lu Stefan Webu Kita tak siapa Kita tak Tugas Kita tak Tugas Kita tak Kita tak And if the unit proves even more uncooperative once we purchase it. It troubles me to see you behaving this way. Such acts can lead to the dark side. How can I help? Can chop a chawi, tea chop twees, yun kun, a tu yama kama wuna henak neck, bugra shak kunti. I am Bastila, yes. I take it that you know my mother. Bona na kachu, kicha badwang, wanga kum kiba boom. Is there something I can do for you, miss? As you can see, we're in quite a hurry. Kakin cha na kwat na bon kon, wana kum bet. My mother's condition. Tin um pa do punta krita. I've not seen my mother since I joined the order. Do you know what's happened? Did she... did she say anything about my father? I see. Where... Part of me would rather not see her at all. But if she...